Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I shall be giving an easy guide on the various different mash steps that are used in brewing. Many years back brewers used to incorporate multiple mash steps into their brewing because quite simply the malt was not as highly modified as it is today. In modern day brewing it is all too common for us to just use two mash steps, but what do they all mean? And why are they all so different for different types of beer? Well, hang around for a bit and I will explain all in a form of an easy guide for you. The first thing to understand is that mash temperature can have many different effects. Essentially, it can adjust the body, taste and mouthfeel of your end beer. Put into simple terms, temperature determines how the sugars are broken down in your mash that will dictate what is ready for your yeast to eat. It's all a case of enzymes in your mash that are at work breaking down the complex sugars into simpler ones. In modern single infusion brewing there are two main enzymes. These are known as alpha and beta amylase. Alpha amylase is most active between 154 to 162 degrees Fahrenheit or between 68 to 72 degrees C. It will convert the sugars held in your grain into sugars that are not very fermentable by your yeast. This will actually add more body to your beer but it will also mean that much of this sugar will not be eaten by your yeast. This sugar will simply stay within your brew adding sweetness but not greater alcohol. Luckily we also have the enzyme beta amylase which is most active between 131 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit or between 55 to 66 degrees C. Beta creates very fermentable sugars that can easily be eaten by your yeast and thus turned into alcohol. It is fair to say that mashes on a lower scale of this range will lack body and be pretty thin which is seldom a good thing. More than one temperature step in this range can be used to create a variation of flavour which in turn can create more complexity. A common mash schedule these days is the cookie cutter schedule of 65 degrees C for mash in and 75 degrees C for mash out. Please see the screen for imperial measurements for this range. The effect of this is a middle of the road conversion and then mashing and ramping up to 75 degrees C mash out which is mostly used to loosen up your grain readying it for the sparge. This is a pretty common schedule for hoppy beers that rely more on the flavour of your hop additions than your malt's flavour profile. These are otherwise known as hop forward beers. Beers that demand more complexity because they are malt forward, for example, as opposed to more hop forward, tend to have more mesh steps. The flavour needs to come from somewhere, but this is often not the only reason. One example would be when mashing certain types of Pilsner malt, which to this day are not as well modified as most Palau malts. A traditional schedule will be mashing at 50, 60 and 70 degrees C with 30 minutes spent at each stage or rest as it is commonly known in brewing. The rest at 50 degrees C is used for breaking down proteins, more on this later, whereas the rests at 60 and 70 both allow alpha and beta amylase enzymes to get to work giving a nice balance. Because pilsners are not exactly packed full of flavour in the same way that an ale is, this works well in making sure that the resulting beer has some extra character. It is also worth mentioning that a lot of modern day brewers feel that the protein rest at 50 degrees C is actually a waste of time, the feeling being that modern malts have enough protein modification during malting. As usual, 
I would urge you to try out everything and make your own mind up. You will actually find that many experienced brewers have a variation in opinion about various different aspects of brewing. Some even get pretty hostile about this. Personally, I prefer a more friendly approach to these potential divisions by using acceptance of everyone's right to their own opinion, as long as they are getting the results they desire. So you will find that different brewers will use slightly different steps here, depending on what they prefer. Just in case you're interested, my favourite Pilsner profile would be 62, 68, 75 degrees C. But I would urge you to do your own experimentation, as I say, unless of course you plan on giving me all of your Pilsner beer brews. OK, let's talk a little bit more about other mash steps or rests as they are known. We also have what is known as the acid rest, and no, it's nothing to do with house parties whatsoever. This used to be used to lower the pH of the mash. Trouble is that it could actually take some hours to do, hence why it's been mostly abandoned by modern breweries. Useful to know though if you run out of the necessary chemicals to lower your mash pH and still wish to brew. Next we have the beta-glucanase rest. This rest can be used to protect your sparge against the contents that can get gummy and cause a stuck sparge. Be warned though, this rest can lead to a reduced level of clarity in your end brew. So only use this rest if this is not an issue. Alternatively, you may want to consider using rice holes instead to combat a potentially hard mash to sparge. What I would suggest you do now is look at the recipes that I share in my various videos and recipes from sources elsewhere to see how mash profiles apply in the numerous types of different beer styles out there. A word of caution though, there really are quite a lot of very very bad recipes shared on the internet. Stick with reputable sources to get a clear idea of how the relationship between mash schedules and beer styles work. Using the information in this guide, you will now be able to see why certain steps are applied in each recipe. Or at least, I sincerely hope you can now. Naturally, this is a quick and easy guide on this topic. You may well find that this is all you ever wish to know. If not, then there are a large amount of books on the topic, some of which will put this subject into complete complex detail. I will warn you in advance that this is far from bedside reading, but some of it could indeed put you to sleep. The choice, as always, is yours. I do hope that you have found this easy guide both useful and interesting. I enjoyed making it, and I hope you enjoyed watching it too. So, if you did like this video, then please do go ahead and like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I've got a lot of videos in the pipeline for the future, so if you're interested in uh, seeing what I've got coming up, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I've covered in this video, or in others, or anything in to do with brewing in general, then please do not hesitate to get in touch. I'm more than happy to help. Until then, happy brewing!